Hey, it's Spence from WP Launch Club with your WordPress tip of the day. Today's video is maybe one of several that I'm gonna make to help those who are using other page builders like Elementor and Divi appreciate and feel comfortable with the basics of using Gutenberg. Now, I've been speaking for several months since my own conversion about why working in Gutenberg is the future for all of us. And this is not to say that Gutenberg is perfect. It still requires a lot of helper plugins to get the job done. But every day we get closer to the fact that the reality of Gutenberg is here and it's not going to change. Number one, having one less layer. Number two, being able to copy and paste right from the native editor. Number three, the speed and simplicity of working at that core layer means that all of the third party activity and energy that now goes into page builders will eventually end up in Gutenberg. I'm absolutely sure of it. And in fact, with Launch Flows, our, my main product, even though it's true that I support Elementor, I 100% do not regret changing all of my current and future conversation towards using Gutenberg and the free patterns that we're creating as a motivation for others to join me. So let's talk in this video about some basic ideas. First of all, in this demo site that I've been using for my live workshop, I don't even have Elementor installed. But if you feel comfortable with your current page builder, like a Divi or an Elementor or one of the older fashion ones, you can actually still continue to use it as long as it's one of those that allow you to use at least the native editor of WordPress. Some of them like Oxygen, for some reason do not. I can't speak to that, I'm not going to speak to that. But in Divi and Elementor, Beaver Builder and so forth, you will actually still have access to your normal native editor. That means you can kind of slowly transition by leaving the header and the footer and the sidebar as they were with your underlying theme. Like for example, if you're using the Divi theme, it's got the builder, but it also has the other things in the theme. You can leave those alone and just focus on the middle content. Now, the things about Gutenberg that are easy are gonna be as follows. Let's go, for example, and add a new page. Gutenberg is a WYSIWYG style editor, but because of the fact that it's in the native editor, there's no load time. As you can see, that literally was as fast as the page loading, and then everything is in front of me. Number two, let's talk about the workspace itself because these are the kind of things that are muscle memory. In the upper right hand corner, you will see this cog wheel. This is what opens up the tray that has many of the controls about the page or about the individual blocks that you put into the page itself. So think of this as sort of your trigger for opening and closing the drawer. Now I happen to have a couple of add-ons here, including the cadence theme. The cadence theme has its own control here that gives me a super convenient way of showing different page layouts that I can use for displaying all of the content in this page. Some other add-ons like Cubely and so forth will have similar buttons. So just look for it for your particular theme or maybe because you've added an additional plugin that adds this block capability. Next is the cadence block controls. This gives you some built-in capabilities. For example, when you're using a plugin for a color palette, you can add to the palette or you can define the default and just use it. Now I'm gonna show you in a second, on the left-hand side, you can customize all of the defaults of the underlying cadence theme, but you could also use a regular or non-cadence theme, for example, with cadence blocks. You could use Astra's theme with a uh, croc -a block So just remember, there's the underlying theme still, and then there are the uh, Gutenberg blocks, either one of which can have their own extra controls that are added to the top. And by the way, you can also unpin this from the toolbar. If you'd rather not see it, you can just remove it so it's not taking up space. That's kind of like what happens when you're working in Chrome and you can add these, you know, pin these extensions to the top. I actually enjoy having it there. Now there's other things that you can also do, such as deciding whether you can see some or all of the blocks that are included in this cadence add-on plugin. Maybe you don't ever use the advanced gallery and you just wanna hide it. So you could just change the settings here and so forth. All right, now you can also do lots of little custom nuances. I'm not gonna get into that, but you'll notice that all of these presets for each of the blocks can be configured. 
This is actually extremely powerful, even in comparison to something like Elementor. Many of you know in Elementor you have to do something called the default kit, where you configure how Elementor works across the various pages on your site. This is a comparable way of doing things, but it's actually quite nice because it allows you to really set up on a granular level things that would be important to your workflow. To be fair, I've ever never actually set up any of the defaults. I just deal with the blocks as they come onto the page. And then finally, if you go back over here, let's talk about, well, actually one more thing. Let's go over here to the options. If you want, you can change the layout of the space. So for example, I want to view the top uh, toolbar or not. There doesn't happen to be any things in there right now, but some of the things might show when I'm using blocks in the layout. I can turn on and off spotlight mode. And what that does is allows me to focus on one block at a time. And then here's this distraction free mode. It's kind of nice, but on a big screen such as mine, I don't really need it. It effectively gets rid of the left hand side uh, navigation menu for WordPress. You can also switch, although I never have done this myself, between the code editor and the visual editor. And that might be useful in those events where you literally want to put some native HTML or text inside of the layout, not by way of a block. You also have some additional options here where you can go between the various plugins. So you can see I've got the Cadence Block Controls plugin, the uh, Extendify, and I've also got the page settings here. Tools, I've got an ability to create and then save for future use various blocks. And if I do, I'll be able to manage them here. Also, you can see that I can manage the blocks available in the plugins I've already installed. So here I've got, oh, a variety of ones. Let's just show you what I, let's scroll down here. Here's all the launch flows plugins, right? For the account. And here's from Learn Dash. And so this is another way where you can disable entire blocks to get them out of your way if you find that it's just too many things being offered at once. Now, while I'm here, but before I leave this, here is an option why that would be important. If you click on the toggle block inserter, you'll see that it shows all of the available blocks. Sometimes it can get overwhelming, even though you can search for it. So being able to curate this is kind of helpful. You'll also see while we're here that there are patterns available. Think of patterns as assemblies of blocks, and here they can be categorized in groups buttons, columns, gallery, and so forth. And you'll notice for launch flows, we actually created a couple of our own, the two column layout and the tab checkout. There might be more in the future, but this is nice because with one click, you could just add an entire pattern full of blocks, as simple as that. Now, what if I did that and I wanted to modify these in a different way than just clicking and moving on screen? Well, here's where I would move my mouse over the list view. And this gives me a very dynamic and soon to be literally capable way of managing where I am in regards to the various layout. This is very similar to the Navigator in Elementor. In a future version of WordPress, I'm quite sure because I've seen it in the beta, you'll be able to drag and drop the items from this list view wherever you want. But for right now, it serves the purpose of being able to go to something and then you can literally know which one you're dealing with so that if you wanted to change it, move it, uh, identify it, and so forth. Likewise, you can select large groups of things, and you could go ahead and hit delete. Okay, so there's lots of controls already in there. You'll notice the toolbar up here. Remember, we had that option. Instead of the toolbar being on the actual block, it's up at the top. So let's go back over here and see where it says top toolbar. We can undo that, and the toolbar floats on whichever one I'm clicking on. Now, let's talk a little bit about the toolbar while we're here. Every toolbar will be different, but typically you'll have a few key items. First of all, on the left-hand side, you'll have the ability to select which column this is associated with. Second of all, you'll have another one here. Let's use this. Let's go back here, by the way. If, if, let, let me go back to the block. <laughs> In this actual example, that's why I had to stumble. In this example, what's happening is this is, watch over here, this is moving me up to the parent column. You see how that works? So if I start here at the child, I can just click here and it will find its parent. Similarly, if I click on a particular child, there will be an icon representing and giving the name of the block I'm in, and there will be the drag handle. 
The drag handle is what I want to click with my left mouse on and hold to move the position. As I mentioned, in a future version of uh, WordPress, this will be available in the left hand side as well, inside of here, the list view. But for right now, it works fine. If I just want to go up and down, I can also use the position arrows to move it up or down in the layout. And then in almost every block, there's also going to be more uh, settings available, including the remove block. So I can remove one block at a time, or I can click on one block, hold my shift key, and then remove multiple blocks. There's another option which is also helpful, which is to create a group of blocks. Now this is helpful because, especially with the short codes, it's sometimes only possible to add custom style if you have a group. So when I'm using any of the LaunchFlow short codes, I'll oftentimes create a group even out of just one block. Because once I've done that, you'll notice on the right hand side, now I have available to me all of the styling controls provided by the Editor Plus plugin, the free add-on that I will show you again on the back side. So this is how, for example, I will add maybe a dashed border for an upsell or order bump. And don't be concerned because this plugin doesn't show on the back end that you can't see the actual output. For many plugins that have a front end only functionality, including launch flows, you simply open up a second tab and now you have the ability to see the results of whatever you're doing, but you just simply go front end and back end. Okay. The reason this isn't showing is because it's for a, a nonsense thing like a coupon. But if I were to put something else inside of here, let's put a, a heading. And then we go ahead and preview again. You'll see that we'll get the output of the actual text or whatever, including the uh, border that was created by using the Editor Plus. Now, it's also worthy of mentioning that once we put content into place, new controls will typically show up. So you noticed here I used a heading, but then I now have new controls. I have the ability to change the style of the block, move it up and down, change the alignment, change the actual heading type, change the align, uh, technically speaking, this is the vertical or the full width, no, take it back. This is the full width or wide width alignment. Here's the text alignment. Here's bold and italic. Here's where I can create a link. And then the down arrow lets me see some additional, you know, esoteric things, like I wanna highlight it or one of the other things, superscript. Now, as before, there's also additional controls here. So lots of fun stuff. And then finally, what I want to show you as well, which I think is useful here, is that um, when I've created a group of things, I can click on this group and I can transform this into something else, like a column. And the reason that might be relevant is uh, some of these blocks are for components, some of them are for layouts. If I were to click here, you'll notice that in addition to just choosing whichever you know paragraph or heading or something or image, I can actually do something like choosing columns, or in this case with the cadence block, a row layout. When I put that into place, I now have a visual clue of what I'm able to build, and I can then just add blocks right inside of those columns, right? So here I'm gonna choose from my media library, put that in place. and so on. So in other words, I am able to use a block, not just for content and components, but also for layout items. When I do that, notice that when I select the column on the left-hand side or by choosing it here, that more options will show up under the block option here of how I can change the arrangement, how I can change, let's say the styling uh, also responsively, background color, box shadow, all of these things are available either because the Editor Plus plugin is working with the native blocks or because I'm using a custom block. Like for example here, let's use a, let's use a custom block for layouts called Rows. This is provided by the Cadence plugin. It's very similar to the columns that are provided by the native WordPress, but it has a lot more options. And you'll notice that when I select any of these that I get a ton of other controls here, including my typical responsive choices and preview. I can also choose the padding and the margin and the border all directly 
inside of this particular block settings. Whereas in this other one, I still get the controls I want, but I'm getting that as a result of working with the uh, Editor Plus plugin, helping the basic components of WordPress's Gutenberg. So to review that part, lots of blocks available. The default blocks themselves are going to give you controls through the Editor Plus. The custom blocks provided by things like Cadence will often have their own controls. And then you can mix and match and save them. Now, what if I have an entire layout and I want to save the whole thing? Here's a neat way of doing it. Click on the three dots and then scroll down to copy all content. What's neat about that is now if I made a new page or post, and we'll ignore that warning, I can simply go ahead and paste that into place just by hitting paste and we're done. Likewise, let's talk about patterns. So patterns are available from a variety of sources, including launch flows. Here I've made lots of different patterns that give you the information that you would need for various scenarios on your sales funnels. Now, all you need to do is find something you like. You can examine a live working version of it, then click copy pattern code. And if you have launch flows installed as well as the WooCommerce plugin, you can do exactly this simple page, add new, of course, you need to configure, if necessary, the fact that the page is layout and that it is a checkout, but otherwise simply paste and boom, you've got your layout right there. In this case, if it's a thank you page, I don't need to do anything different other than maybe change the width of the page. I'm going to maybe use cadence blocks and make it full width and so forth. So this is just one of several videos to help you out. The neatest part about this is how fast it works. You notice that if I want to change something, I just type right here, thanks Bob, and I change a color or an image just by clicking on the object, going to the cogwheel, going to the block, and then I can do whatever I want with it, right? I want to add a big dotted or dashed border around it. No big deal. When I want to preview it, it doesn't take days or weeks or months to open on the front or back end like these other page builders do. It's really brisk, even if you've done something complex. So the speed, simplicity, the ability to copy and paste, reuse, use patterns, infinitely better. And I think in the long run, because it still works with the normal theme, header and footer or sidebar, gives you tons of flexibility. This is Spence. I'll see you in the next video.